Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Ryan Breton with a look at the latest on Hurricane Lee and its potential impact on New England as of midday Tuesday. And worth remembering, we're still about three and a half, four days away from any potential impact in New England. So there is still some uncertainty in the storm's forecast, which can be expected this far out. And only slight changes can make a difference in the impact you'll see. So we'll go over all of that here in this video. But let's start out with some of the big headlines with the storm. The general track of the storm will be off the New England coast on Saturday. How close is the question? If it comes close enough, uh, parts of New England could see some significant rain and wind, but if it shifts even just a little bit farther out and heads toward Nova Scotia, a lot of the rain and a lot of the serious wind will stay offshore. Either track will produce high surf, coastal flooding, and splashover in eastern New England and at Atlantic beaches. For those of you, though, in Long Island Sound, as I'll explain in a minute, uh, be kind of protected from a lot of the wave action and the wind direction is favorable for the Connecticut shoreline too as it will be an offshore wind regardless of the track this storm takes. For those of you in Connecticut watching this you need to know that a worst case scenario would bring some heavy rain into especially eastern parts of the state and gusty winds perhaps strong enough for some isolated issues and in eastern New England the risk is higher. There could be some serious rain and wind in eastern Massachusetts, eastern New Hampshire and Maine depending on the exact track the storm takes but even there it's not quite a guarantee just yet. Here's a look at the latest on Hurricane Lee as of the 11 a.m. advisory Tuesday. It is a category 3 hurricane. So far it has not hit any land and is not forecast to hit any land uh, over the next couple of days. The forecast from the Hurricane Center taking it to the west of Bermuda on Thursday as a category 2 hurricane and then it travels to the north. The good news is as it gets up to this latitude the water is cooler. It will not be a classic hurricane when it gets here. Bad news is it'll behave a little bit more like a nor'easter. With a hurricane the winds are focused near the center of the storm and once it gets to this latitude the wind field will spread out so it won't have widespread 75 or 80 mile an hour winds but there will be a larger field of 60 70 mile an hour wind gusts within the storm. Now that wind field could stay offshore if it takes a farther east track but if it comes closer to the coast then more people would get involved in eastern New England and that gusty wind. I want to show you the spaghetti plot of models. This basically taking each model track for the center of the storm and plotting a line for it. You can see very good agreement through Thursday and even into Friday. But what happens over the weekend remains a question. The majority of the computer models at this point suggest the track will be far enough offshore to spare New England the worst of the rain and wind. However, there are some models, including the European computer model and its ensembles, that bring it back west toward the Maine coast and into the Gulf of Maine. And if this were to happen, it would be a bit more of a significant impact, particularly in eastern New England. So that's kind of what we're watching today and tomorrow. Will the track of Lee wobble west into the Gulf of Maine, as shown here with a couple of the models? Or will it stay closer to the center of the National Hurricane Center track or even go east of it, which would be bad news for Nova Scotia, but better news for New England? Even in this worst case scenario, for those of you in Connecticut watching, it would still be a relatively mild minor impact. There would be rain, some of it heavy in eastern Connecticut. We certainly don't need any more rain after the last uh, couple of days in the summer we've had. But the wind gusts, even in this worst case scenario for Connecticut, would be strongest to our east. In Connecticut there could be some 30 to 40 plus mile per hour wind gusts coming in out of the north and northwest. If it did track uh, farther to the west on the left side of this cone, Cape Cod, the islands, eastern Massachusetts, eastern New Hampshire, and Maine would be at greater risk for wind gusts topping 50 to 60 miles per hour, which would be enough to cause power outages, uh, particularly with leaves still on the trees at this point in the fall, or late summer, I should say. Uh, heavy rain, flash flooding, and coastal flooding. Uh, during high tides. And actually, I think on any of these tracks, eastern New England will be vulnerable to coastal flooding. So let's kind of break down how I see the most likely scenario at this point, and then the worst case and best case. Taking the center of the National Hurricane Center's track as the most likely scenario uh, off the New England coast, it would be far enough to spare the worst wind, but there would be some heavy rain perhaps on Cape Cod, the islands, and fringe rain getting into eastern New England, and also some gusty northeast 
to northerly winds, which especially at exposed coastal areas in eastern New England could gust over 40 or 45 miles per hour with isolated power outages possible. In Connecticut, we would be removed from most of the rain. Eastern Connecticut could see some rain, but central and western Connecticut could stay dry if the center of this track pans out to be. But just given the pressure differences, it would still be breezy or gusty with wind gusts in Connecticut 25 to 35 miles per hour, even on the most likely scenario. So it would be a breezy or windy day on Saturday with the potential for some minor issues uh, related to power in Connecticut. They'd be very isolated. But in eastern New England, closer to the storm, there could still be some gusts 40, 45, maybe even 50 miles per hour out on Cape Cod. That's the most likely scenario at this point. The best case scenario is it takes the eastern side of that National Hurricane Center track and actually where some more of the model guidance takes it right now. And that would mean no rain in Connecticut. No rain in a lot of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, with the exception of maybe the immediate coast of Cape Cod and down East Maine. And it would be dry and breezy in Connecticut. Now again, we'd still have the pressure difference driving the wind, so it would be breezy, some gusts 25, 30, maybe 35 miles per hour in this scenario. Um, but it really wouldn't be much of an impact in terms of rain and wind. There still would be coastal impacts in eastern New England, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, the worst case scenario, which I still rate a low chance, but it is something we can't write off yet and we have to pay attention to it, is a closer track. So we're still watching the possibility that this travels on the western side of the Hurricane Center's cone of uncertainty, kind of as the European model is suggesting could happen. It wobbles to the west into the Gulf of Maine, and that would bring the rain into all of eastern New England, strong gusty winds into eastern New England, 50 to 60 mile per hour gusts uh, in parts of Maine, eastern New Hampshire, eastern Massachusetts, and perhaps even higher gusts on Cape Cod and the islands. In Connecticut, uh, this would mean rain heavy in eastern parts of the state. Uh, not prolific wind gusts, but some gusts over 40 or 45 miles per hour in spots on Saturday. Again, this is the worst case scenario, which for Connecticut is not so bad, but it would be more of an issue in eastern New England, behaving more like a windy, wet nor'easter uh, that would bring a lot of coastal flooding, a lot of heavy rain and gusty winds to eastern New England. We may be able to write this off, if the models trend back east tomorrow and hold there on Thursday. Probably not going to know for sure until Thursday if this scenario is completely off the table for Cape Cod, Eastern Mass, New Hampshire, and Maine. Even the worst case scenario though is not a classic hurricane. It's more like a very strong nor'easter which as we know can cause big impacts and create a mess. Uh, but this is something we're going to have to monitor and the concern level is highest in eastern Massachusetts, Cape the Islands, uh, New Hampshire, eastern New Hampshire, and Maine. Because from here, if this worst case scenario were to happen, it would travel up toward the Maine coast and then eventually head toward the Bay of Fundy and New Brunswick. So again, this is a relatively low chance, but one that we've got to continue to watch and we can't take off the table just yet. As far as the coastal flooding and coastal concerns, for those of you in Long Island Sound, one thing that's really favorable for us, regardless of the track the storm takes, is that the wind will be offshore. That will push the wave action down a bit on the Connecticut shoreline. It could mean more significant impacts on the north shore of Long Island. Now once you get toward the entrance or the exit of Long Island Sound around Groton, New London, you'll be able to see some more of the wave action, but it's really not until you get toward Rhode Island, southeastern Mass, and especially the Atlantic coast in eastern New England, where you'll have an onshore wind, possibly a couple of high tide cycles with an onshore wind, large waves, splash over, and a coastal flooding risk. So people here really need to be ready if you live on the coast for that. And if you've got a boat, especially in eastern New England, follow what the harbor masters and marina folks are saying. In Long Island Sound, especially the farther west you are, I'd follow the guidance they provide, but it is definitely a lower threat given the wind direction and will be farther away from the storm. So we are still a couple of days away and there can and will be adjustments to this forecast, but the idea right now is the farther east in New England you are, the more at risk you are from this storm. And if it ends up taking a farther east track, New England will be spared the worst rain and wind, but it'd be bad news for Nova Scotia. That's the update as of midday Tuesday. We'll be with you all week long for updates.